Hi friends, my name is Amanda and welcome back or welcome to Ace Creates. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about my top 12 and the yarn that I've picked out that's currently in my stash already ready to go for my projects this year. One of my goals for 2024 was that my top 12 projects come from yarn that is in my stash. Now, again, things change. I may not get to all 12. In an effort to be a little bit more mindful in my yarn purchasing and consumption, I wanted to make sure that at least my top 12 was yarn from my stash. So I'm going to put up a screen recording of the top 12 that I have in my Ravelry queue because as you will see in one of my previous videos that I will link down below and up above, um, I reset my Ravelry queue as a way to get myself ready for 2024 All Things Yarn. And so it was a really great way for me to pair yarn that I have in my stash um, with projects that I want to do. Now, some were in my queue already and some weren't. And um, some of them are going to be really stretches for what I can do as, um, as a crafter, but it's something that I'm willing to undertake and try. So let's get into today's video and look at all of the yarn and projects that I'm going to be working on in 2024 as part of my top 12. The first project that I'm going to be working on is a cardigan and it's the Muna Cardi from Tony Lipsy. It's a Tunisian crochet cardigan. Um, what's really cool about it is it has a honeycomb stitch borders and just a simple stitch kind of body. Um, and I love Tunisian crochet, I mean, period. And um, I actually just caked up two of the skeins that I'm going to be using. I am going to be using Baliora Fibers Tweed DK. It's 75% superwash merino, 15% nylon, and 10% net. There's 246 yards in this skein, 100 gram skein, and this is the colorway Fingles Cave. So Baliura was one of the yarn dyers that I found at Flock, and unfortunately she didn't have enough of like a specific colorway for me to make an item. And so I knew that I wanted to take part in one of her pre-orders and I got a bunch of yarn from one of her pre-orders this fall. And so it came in and um, I had designated the Muna Cardi to do this. Um, she has probably the softest Merino DK that I've ever felt in my entire life. That is really what attracted me to her yarn at Flock. And so, I knew I wanted to make a couple of garments with the items that um, I knew I wanted to make a couple garments with the yarn that I got from her. And so this is kind of the first uh, project. So this is number one, the Muna Cardi um, from Tony Lipsy with Baliora Tweed DK in Fingal's Cave. So the next project that I'm going to be working on is the Lento by Joanna Hytella. Hopefully I'm saying that right. This is a simple raglan style um, pullover sweater. Um, it would be my first knitted garment or my first knitted sweater, depending on when I get to it this year. Um, but it looked simple enough that I could probably figure things out as I go as a baby knitter. Um, one of my goals, as you saw in the goal video, is to really, really focus on um, expanding my knitting skill set this year um, while continuing to master crochet. And so I thought that the Lento, based on what others have 
kind of other projects on Ravelry and what I've seen some other um, content creators and knitters do um, with their Lento. And so I wanted to dive in and I really wanted a sweater for Christmas that didn't scream Christmas. And so I saw this yarn from Ruby and Roses as part of her holiday pre-order. And I picked up a couple skeins of Mistletoe Mixer, both in the Surrey base, as well as the, which is uh, Rose Cloud, Rose Cloud um, Surrey base, and then Soft Rose, which is 85% Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon. And so in the Rose Cloud, I get, um, it's a lace weight yarn, and it's 75% baby alpaca and 25% mulberry silk. There's 328 yards in a skein in the colorway mistletoe mixer. And then I'm going to pair it with their soft rose, which is the 85%, 15% superwash merino and nylon. And there's 437 um, yards in the skein and it's a um, fingering weight yarn so it really reminded me of Christmas lights especially on the Surrey it just it really reminded me of Christmas lights and so that's kind of what I want like what my intention is is to have like a Christmas sweater that doesn't green Christmas um, but it's still wearable throughout the rest of the year because it doesn't scream Christmas um, so I thought it was really fun and I can't wait to see this work up I will say that for some reason I thought that the base was a little bit more pink um, instead of cream but at least my batch it's a little bit more cream which I don't mind I actually love that but I was expecting based on some others but you know that's hand dyed yarn you know it's different from batch to batch so i'm going to be using these two pair together to make the lento by joanna hytella so the next project uh that i'm going to be working on you've actually seen this before on my channel but i didn't get to it and it's moved into 2024 and so that is the love note by tin can knits and I'm actually gonna be making the toddler version um, for my daughter. I'm gonna be using um, this mohair from Diablo. And pairing it with this loops and threads wool like yarn. The problem that I've had with the love notes so far is that my needles are too long so I needed shorter needle tips um, for this project because I couldn't I cast on the required number of stitches on the right cord but it's just like not it's too long and so I've not been able to join in the round so I have different needle tips now and so hopefully I can get this it's a beautiful like lacy yoke um, so I think if I can read the charts and get through that part, then the rest is just a stockinette stitch. And so I wanted to kind of try this out on, um, more inexpensive yarn and at my daughter's size, um, because it wouldn't take as long and just get through some of the kinks. And then I might make another one for myself with some stash yarn that I have. So that is my third item on my queue, the Love Note by Tin Can Knits with this beautiful paired yarn. The next project on my queue is the Home Girl Sweater by Megan Shames. I've showed it on the channel before, but again, I didn't get to it um, because I had a test come up and so I needed to finish the test item instead of working on this sweater. So this is a crocheted sweater I am going to be using the Vitalana Oasis um, yarn. It's uh, in the color of Casablanca. It's 50% alpaca wool, 25% Peruvian Highland Merino wool, 
and 25% Surrey alpaca. Um, it's a DK weight. Uh, there's 252 yards. I actually have quite a number because I got them from Knit Picks before it shut down and it was really affordable. Um, the one thing is I accidentally spilled coffee on this project bag. And so some of the skeins are going to smell like coffee. And so I'm going to have to like really clean this sweater once it's done. But it's a cute oversized sweater um, and I really like it because it doesn't have just a traditional cowl. It's like a mini v-neck like but a wide v-neck to me. Um, and so I really like that. I kind of like wider necks. Um, and so it just look really comfy and I had the perfect amount of yarn already kind of set aside for this. Um, I actually had the perfect amount of yarn in my stash and so um, looking forward to seeing this crocheted up. So this is going to be used to make the homegirl sweater by Megan Shames, number four in my queue. I forgot to even put yarn. So in addition to resetting my Ravelry queue and reorganizing it so that I could identify my top 12, what I did was, because I'm using all stash yarn for the top 12, I pulled all the yarn out and cleared out one of my shelves over here. And my queue yarn is going to live here so that I can kind of see the progress of it coming down throughout the year. And so it's a really great way for me to see where I have projects already assigned and yarn already assigned. And when I'm having cast-itis and I really want to cast something on, I should cast on something from my queue. Um, so I did that in preparation for my top 12. So the fifth thing that I'm going to work on this year, and this is actually um, something... I did a lot of shawls and cowls and accessories last year. This year, kind of the theme is more garments um, because I really want a handmade wardrobe that isn't just accessories. And so the fifth item and only accessory on my top, no, that's a lie. It's not the only accessory. It's one of two accessories in my queue. Um, but the fifth item that I'm going to knit up this year is the Sunday morning wrap from, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but Espace Grico. Um, and it is a beautiful, dreamy um, wrap. I, I mean, I don't know how to describe it, but, um, but I saw it knit up, and I'll try to find some clips of it from Flock, but I actually saw it knit up at Flock um, at the Yarn Nouveau um, booth, and I fell in love with their Yak DK base. So I'm gonna be using the Yarn Nouveau Yak DK base, which is a 60% superwash merino wool, 20% silk, and 20% yak. There's 231 yards, so I actually had to get four of these um, to do the project, but this is the colorway Lydia. It's like a purple brown, um, but a really great neutral. So I remember feeling this yarn at Flock on the already knit up item. And so that's kind of what, I really wanted a different color um, than the, the one, but they didn't have enough of the blue. So I kind of um, settled for this uh, purpley red. It's, I don't know, it's, a, it's definitely brown, but it's got some like purple tones, maybe some red tones in there. Um, but it's, it's beautiful and it's so, oh my gosh, it's so squishy. For my fifth item, I'm going to be making the Sunday morning wrap from Espace Tricot in the colorway, um, uh, Lydia from Yarn Nouveau in their Yak DK base. So the sixth thing in my queue for me to make in 2024 is the Salty Air Tea by Samantha Guerin. And I am going to be using Malabrigo Sock in the colorway Impressionist Sky. I got this on the San Diego Yarn Crawl and really fell in love with this blue. I love blue. 
I mean, Blue Yarn and me are just like the best of friends. And so um, I saw the Salty Air Tea and it's a beautiful kind of, again, yoke, lacy yoke a little bit. Not too over the top lacy, but just a subtle lacy design here. Um, and then stockinette body. And um, being in Southern California, I can't make a ton of sweaters and really wear them. But because wool, even though it's hot, like in Southern California, wool deals so much better with like sweat and especially against my skin. And so that's why I don't mind wearing wool even in the summer here in Southern California. But the way I get around to it is I make teas or tanks or things like that. So when I saw the Salty Air Tea, I thought that this beautiful blue would work up really well. And it looked like it didn't need more than two skeins, which again, I'm always amazed at, even for like the bus size that I need to make, getting away with only two skeins um, because it's it's a tee and it's short sleeve and all of that, but it's knitted and so you just use so much less yarn and it, that's fantastic. And so that's another reason why I really want to learn to knit a little bit better just because there you can just use less yarn with knitting. I still love my crochet, don't get me wrong, especially my Tunisian crochet, but the appeal of knitted garments has always like just I've just fallen in love with them. So for my sixth item, we're doing the Salty Air Tea by Samantha Guarin with Malabrigo Sock in the colorway Impressionist Sky. So the seventh item in my queue is the Love is Love Crop by Courtney A. Clark. The Her handle is I Love Tinderbox on Instagram. And I am going to be using, I lost the tag, but I am going to be using Sorella Yarn Cashmere DK um, in the colorway Mendocino. It's this really beautiful purple that they didn't use any purple to create this color. Um, it was part of the Tony Lipsy collection in 2024. Um, I'm not a purple gal, but I, I just fell in love with this. It's a cute little cropped tank that I thought I could layer I have three skeins of this. I did the math before I purchased and I should have enough to create the top. So I'm really looking forward to having another layering piece in my wardrobe. And so the seventh item in my queue again is the Love is Love Crop by Courtney A. Clark um, in Sorella Yarn Cashmere DK in the colorway Mendocino. So the eighth item in my queue is the Mount Pleasant tea. I, it's not named that, but it's just the Mount Pleasant by Megan No Decker. And I am going to be using this beautiful um, yarn from a simpler time um, alpaca mill and store. Um, it's 70% baby alpaca, 30% silk. So I thought that would make a beautiful summer tea. And it's got this beautiful detailing around the bottom of the tea. Um, and it's a bottom up construction. Um, so you do the lace work first and then you uh, do stockinette and then you split for sleeves and you kind of finish it up in the round at the top, at the top neckline. So I really loved this yarn when I went on the San Diego yarn crawl and I knew that I wanted to make a tee out of it. So it's in the colorway gunmetal and there's 436 yards in this yarn. So I'll be making the, I will be making the Mount Pleasant by Megan Nodecker in um, this baby alpaca sick silk from a simpler time alpaca mill. So the next project in my queue is the Field Day Cardigan by Ozetta. Um, I love cardigans or open um, construction, like I call them house sweaters, but layering sweaters. 
Um, and so I um, I'm going to use the Bali Aura Merino Decay. I mentioned this earlier um, about her Tweed Decay, but her Merino Decay is so, 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 so super soft. So this is Merino Decay in the colorway River Spay. It's 100% Superwash Merino. There's 218 yards. Um, so it's kind of bulkier DK. So I'm hoping that's okay for the pattern. Um, if not, I'll find another use for it. But um, it's in the colorway River Spay. And it's this gorgeous, like, hopefully the camera picks it up. I don't know if it will, but it's this gorgeous, like, deep blue with like hints of teal green but it's still very much a blue yarn so this will stretch my skill set um especially since it's a cardigan and so it's not necessarily knit in the round because i am not getting into steaking um and so We'll see how that goes. So I will be using this Merino DK from Baliora Fibers to create the Field Day Cardigan as my number nine queued item this year. So the next item in my queue is the Ranunculus. And of course the Ranunculus is gonna make it into my queue. It's something, it's, it's actually one of the first knitted items that I'm like, yes, I want to make it. So, of course, the Ranunculus by Midori Hirose made it into my queue as the number 10 item. The Ranunculus was one, I actually saw Leslie make it from Knit California, and I've seen several others, Rachel is knitting, um, and it really made me want to learn to knit, um, just because, A, seeing the amount of yarn needed for this project and because it's so flexible you could use one skein you could use multiple skeins just depending on what weight of yarn you wanted to use um and so or if you wanted like a crop length you wanted a long sleeve short sleeve there's just so much flexibility in this top so I'm actually going to be using some stash yarn um I'm going to be using Malabrigo sock in the colorway Persia. It's this teal, green, gray, black is the best way to describe it. Um, it's really great. I hope that both of my skeins, because they were bought separately, work well together because I found out in my um, Malabrigo Arroyo that I used to make my sweater weather. Yes, it says no dye lots, but there's definitely dye lots with Malabrigo yarn. Um, you could get one batch, a completely different colorway. And it's a shame that they list like no dye lots um, because there's obviously variations in the colors. So hopefully they go together well. If not, I'm just gonna kind of uh, alternate skeins uh, for quite a bit until, um, I'm happy with the transition. Um, so number 10, The Ranunculus by Midori Hirose, and I'm gonna be using Malabrigo Sock in the colorway Persia. So the 11th item in my queue this year is the Double Take Tunisian Crochet Tank by K Crochets. I've actually had this in my queue for most of the year. Um, it's a Tunisian crochet tank, and what's unique about it is she actually styles it and wears it with the simple stitch on the inside like towards your body and the 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 wrong side facing out the wrong side looks a little bit like garter stitch and um i just thought it was really cute and it looked pretty simple to make um and again one of the things that i'm trying to do is do more tunisian crochet this year i actually have a test coming up for Violet Loops, Jennifer Levitt of Violet Loops, another test for her. Um, it's not in my top 12, um, but it will be one of the items that I do this year. So I'm gonna be using Sorella Yarn Silk DK for this. It's 50% silk, 
50% Super Wash Merino. There's 231 yards in this skein. Um, it's in the colorway Monterey. Um, and again, another yarn from the Tony Lipsy collection. I made a tank um, out of this um, and I absolutely loved working with this yarn, wearing this yarn. It's a perfect summer yarn for those that don't wanna wear a cotton, linen, non-wool. Um, it's, it's light and airy and you can wear it in the summer um, even here in Southern California and still not feel too overheated. Number 11, the Double Take Tunisian Tank by K Crochets using Sorella Yarn Silk DK. So the last item in my queue for 2024 is the Leftover City Cowl by Casey Herlihy. But I don't have the yarn actually picked out, but I have tons of mini skeins that I'm gonna use for this project. I just haven't had the mindset to sit down and pair yarn for this. Um, but it's a really cute kind of um, stacked um, stripes, but it's not just like a regular like stockinette stripe. I mean, it is stockinette, but um, the, the color work is part of this. So I thought this would be a really great exercise in color work for me. So um, I'm really excited um, to get this. I'll probably work on it later in the year so that I have it ready for the fall because it's a tighter cowl, something that I would wear in colder weather, not something like my um, juniper cowl that I tend to wear whether it's warm or cold um, as a more stylized piece and whereas this is a little bit warmer closer to your neck but it's going to be beautiful so I will definitely share the yarn with you once I have kind of paired it. I have a bunch of minis from yarn clubs um, just random minis that I've gotten. I have also have minis as part of sock sets and I'm not making socks so I might pull some of that out. So it'll be really fun to kind of play with colors and see how I want to kind of do the whole project. So that is my final cued item for 2024, The Leftover City by Casey Hurley. So those are my 12 items that I'm going to knit or crochet this year in 2024. I hope to get to it. I'm also not going to like give myself a hard time if I don't get to all the items. But again, I wanted to be really intentional with some of my stash yarn and intentional about this list and using stash yarn for my top 12 so that way um, I could make room for future yarn in 2024. So what are you making in 2024? I'd love to hear out in the comments below. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and consider subscribing, subscribing to my channel if you have not subscribed. Uh, if you are subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, I have a goal of getting to a thousand subscribers this year. I'm just shy of 500 and so I'm hoping you can help me uh, get to a thousand subscribers this year. So be sure to give it a thumbs up and cons consider subscribing to my channel. So my knit outfit of the day uh here is my what the heck is it? sophie shawl this is the sophie shawl from petite knit um i did it in smushy yarn from dream and color it's their worsted weight yarn it didn't soften as much as i would have liked it to but it's still a really nice piece thank you so much friends and i will see you in